All right, boys. Love you. Three, two, one. Love you guys. degree off-hitting openings. You're traveling back towards the object. Probably the most unpredictable, dangerous, and uncontrollable variable that we have in base jumping. So how do we plan for something when we aren't sure what actually causes it? I'm going to talk about this and how it influenced my approach to jumping my very first cliff and how it's influenced my approach towards any object since. <laughs> an off hitting opening but they're so unpredictable and so inconsistent i'm going to save these for another video so i can get into more detail on them here i'm only going to talk about what we do to plan for off hitting openings on slider down jumps where we're still very close to the object at the moment of deployment we plan for 180s by increasing the amount of time we have to respond to a deployment that results in us heading back towards the object these are assuming a 180 can happen on any jump that we do training for object avoidance in the event we have a 180 where we can make corrections based on our risers or our toggles if we need to we want to ensure we're using the proper wing loading to decrease the forward speed we have at deployment. We want to install custom deep brakes as soon as we can to ensure that our forward speed at deployment is just above a stall. To make sure we're traveling as slow as we can, this gives us more time to respond and also decreases the force we'll take if we do impact the object. We want to ensure we're taking as long of a delay as we can for a slider down jump while ensuring we have enough time for deployment as well as enough altitude to land our canopy safely. And we want to run off the exit as fast as we can whenever we're able to. Now let's watch a couple of 180s. This first one is about as well as a 180 resulting in an object strike can kind of play out. Three, two, one, see ya. Johnny's truly lucky to be alive after that one. He actually walked away virtually completely unharmed. I mean, getting two object strikes in one jump is pretty unlucky, but at the same time, pretty much only luck is the thing that kind of saved him there. There probably wasn't a lot that he could have done to prevent that 180. I mean, he could have had a little bit better body position, but what he could have done is increase the amount of time he had to respond to that off heading by running faster off of exit and taking a longer delay. Now let's watch Trevor's 180. You can see Trevor gets a pretty good runoff exit, he takes a pretty good delay, and he has an almost instantaneous heading correction. All these result in him getting perfectly out of the way from that cliff. You can see his end cell actually ever so slightly brushes that cliff though. So if his reaction time was delayed by even one second, or he took a shorter delay off of that cliff, he probably would have had an object strike. And this leads us into why I was so terrified of doing my first cliff. I mean, I didn't trust my abilities in being able to get myself out of any of these situations at the time. And statistically, if we reference the base fatality list, you'll see that more fatalities and injuries have occurred on earth objects than any other object. If you have a 180 on a bridge, you're just gonna travel right beneath it. You can make a heading correction, loop around, and then land back in your landing area. If you have a 180 on an antenna, you typically have about a 270 degree window of heading correction. Solid objects, such as buildings and cliffs, only have about a 180 degree window of heading correction. This means that if you have anything over a 90 degree off heading, left or right, and you continue in your path of travel without making a heading correction, you're gonna strike the object. And this was a very real possibility that I didn't wanna encounter until I felt completely confident I could handle it. I talked about in previous videos how I walked down on two separate cliffs. The first was Camelback, that's supposed to be my 14th jump, and the second was the Superstitions, which was going to be my second attempt at my 14th jump. So it wasn't until jump 17 that I felt ready. Three jumps later, ooh. but I didn't want to let that confidence fade, so when the time came, I wanted to capitalize on it. So that same cliff you saw Trevor Clear 180 from is the same cliff that I had my sights set on. Topless is a pretty forgiving cliff. I mean, it's overhung, it's about 450 feet tall, and the smooth sandstone in Sedona is quite a bit more forgiving than a lot of the jagged cliffs you usually find around Arizona. And Sedona is a very beautiful, magical 
magical place. I mean, I think it was very soothing, you know, encountering something so terrifying. It was a weird dichotomy between the two things. So I think that very much, you know, added to my level of comfort for this cliff. I should probably mention that Trevor's 180 was only like a few weeks to a month before I actually approached this object. So it was definitely very much playing in the back of my mind leading up to it. So completely disregarding all the safety measures I was talking about earlier and allotting yourself more time in the event that you have a 180, I decided to go handheld with a 46 off this and just doing a go and throw. I did make sure that I got a good running start off of it so I could get some amount of separation, but at this point I was more concerned with just ensuring I had confidence and I was comfortable in jumping this because I think that was the most important thing at the time. <laughs> As you see here, I actually get a pretty good running exit, but I exit off completely at high. I'm actually in like a Mary Poppins stance. You can see my feet dangling below me. It's not ideal, but exiting head high actually allows you for better response on your toggles to make heading corrections because your body isn't whipping as much as it would if you were in belly to earth orientation. I've noticed my exit usually goes to crap when I'm lacking confidence and I'm really terrified of the jump. I exit head high and I usually flail quite a bit. And that's pretty much all I needed to get me started on cliffs. And for those two cliffs that I walked down earlier, didn't let those loom over my head for too much longer. pretty convinced that if Moab didn't have as many approachable, you know, legal earth exits as it does, that, you know, Arizona very well could be the next mecca in line for legal earth objects and base jumping. You can jump 30 different earth exits in a day and never jump the same one twice. And since that first cliff jump, I've worked my way up to implementing all these safety measures, taking longer delays, running off exit anytime I can, as fast as I can. And at about 50 jumps, that's when I took Snake River's object avoidance course. I actually signed up for it right after my fundamentals course, but it wasn't until about 50 jumps where I actually was able to take it. Through their course, you practice object avoidance avoidance drills, you pack 180 malfunctions, and you install custom deep brakes that are on your canopy specific to your body weight. And this is something that I think everybody should go through because it's really important to have this skill set under your belt. And to this day, I expect to have a 180 on every single jump that I'm doing, no matter what kind of object it is. It's good practice and it's good to make sure that you keep yourself in check and you're always able to respond to any kind of correction or malfunction you do have. And that's all I got for you guys. So until next time, be safe. <laughs>